And we talk about having a cheap food policy, and we actually don't have a cheap food policy. We have a cheap labor and cheap raw materials policy, and that's a very different thing. Uh, and again, Bill Heffernan, in fact, told me once uh, several years ago that the return on investment in food is second only to return on investment in pharmaceuticals. So there's a lot of money in food, but we've created a kind of system where we want to extract as much wealth as possible from labor and raw materials so we can add profits you know, in other parts of the system. The single goal for industrial production is maximum efficient production for short-term economic return. And the maximum efficient production, of course, is yield, producing as much yield as possible uh, with as little input. But when they talk about input in the industrial system, they're basically talking labor input. So you want to maximize the, in, the yield as efficiently, as labor efficiently as possible uh, for short-term economic return. And uh, of course, if you happen to be a farmer, your short-term return a lot of times isn't that good because you don't, you don't have any power in the system. I mean, you're basically the raw material supplier. So farmers have always been pressured and rewarded for yield. You know, if you have the highest corn yields in your state, you're going to get all kinds of PR. If you produce some really good quality stuff, you never get mentioned. <laughs> We're starting to recognize now that uh, yield isn't everything. You use more and more fertilizer to get more yields and then you've got more runoff into streams and then you've got dead zones. And some, some estimates now we have about a thousand dead zones uh, on the planet. And so, uh, so these are starting to come into the public conversation now. And uh, so uh, uh, yield as the sole way that farmers are rewarded, I think, uh, is going to become uh, increasingly difficult and we're going to be looking at other other quality issues. Also, in, in terms of the, the, the quantity versus quality, if you look at that from the point of view of human health, you know, if you produce a lot of calories of food, uh, then uh, which has, I mean, you don't pay attention to the nutrient quality. And I've talked to a lot of plant breeders who have said, you know, I say, you know, how come we've got all this expertise in plant breeding, uh, but the quality of our food's gone down? And they say, well, we haven't bred for any quality. We only bred for yield. That's what we have to do. And um, so uh, if we start to begin to make those connections that uh, you, you, you breed for a lot of calories but not for nutrient quality, and then you start to have some health uh, effects. And, uh, and I think, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't have a way of proving this, but I think one of the, not the only contributing factor, but one of the contributing factors to obesity is that if you're eating a lot of calories that are low in nutrient quality, you know, your body's going to feel like it's still hungry when in fact it's had plenty of calories, but it hasn't had the nutrient quality for the satisfaction. And so then you, you eat more calories than what, uh, than what your body really uh, can sustain without uh, uh, contributing to, uh, to obesity. So these are all issues that become a cost factor so that just because you produce a lot of yield for a small price uh, uh, doesn't include all of those externalized costs you know, that, uh, that we ultimately all pay for.